All right. I'm <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another read from the Quarantine Theater Company. This is the screenplay for Notting Hill, and we've got a great cast here today. Travis will be reading our scene description of Notting Hill. Uh, Logan will be reading as William. Anne will be reading as Anna. Jennifer is here, too, as Spike and other characters. Paul is here as reading as Honey and other characters. And I will be reading as Martin and other characters as well. So please enjoy and go ahead, Travis. Thank you, Jared. Notting Hill, screenplay by Richard Curtis. Uh, exterior various days, she plays through the credits exquisite footage of Anna Scott, the great movie star of our time, an ideal, the perfect star and woman, her life full of glamour and sophistication and mystery. It still sounds like my life. Exterior street day, mixed through... Uh, mixed through to William, 35, relaxed, pleasant, informal. We follow him as he walks down Portobello Road, road carrying a load of bread. It is spring. Of course, I've seen her films and always thought she was, well, <laughs> fabulous. But, you know, million miles from the world I live in, which is here, Notting Hill. Not a bad place to be. Exterior Portobello Road day. It's full of fruit market day. There's a market on weekdays, selling every fruit and vegetable known to man. Exterior Portobello Road Day, a man in denim exits the tattoo studio. A tattoo parlor with a guy outside who got drunk and now can't remember why he chose I Love Ken. Exterior Portobello Road Day. The racial hairdressers where everyone comes out looking like Cookie Monster, whether they, whether they like it or not. Sure enough, a girl exits with a huge threaded blue bouffant exterior Bordebello Road Saturday. Then suddenly, it's the weekend, and from break of day, hundreds of stalls appear out of nowhere, filling Portobello Road right up to Notting Hill Gate. A frantic crowd, Portobello Market. And thousands of people buy millions of antiques, some genuine. The camera finally settles on a stall selling beautiful stained glass windows of various sizes, some featuring biblical scenes and saints. And some not so genuine. Exterior Goldbore Road Day. And what's great is that lots of friends have ended up at this part of London. Uh, that's Tony, architect turned chef, who recently invested all the money he ever earned in a new restaurant. Shot of Tony proudly signed out a board outside his restaurant. The sign's still being painted. He receives and approves a huge fresh salmon. Exterior, Portobello Road Day. So this is where I spend my days and years, in this small village in the middle of the city, in a house with a blue door that my wife and I bought together, before she left me for a man who looked like Harrison Ford, only even handsomer. We arrive outside his blue-doored house just off Portobello. And where I now lead a strange half-life with a lodger called Interior Williams House Day. Spike! The house has far too many things in it, definitely too bachelor flat. Spike appears, an unusual looking fellow. He has unusual hair, unusual facial hair, and unusual Welsh accent. Very white, as though his flesh has never seen the sun. He wears only shorts. Even he! Hey, you couldn't help me with an incredibly important decision, could you? Is this important in comparison to, oh, let's say, whether they should cancel third world debt? That's right. I'm at last going out on a date with the great Janine, and I just want to be sure I've picked the right t-shirts. What are the choices? Well, wait. Wait for it. First, there's this one. The t-shirt is white, with a horrible-looking plastic alien coming out of it. Jaws open. Blood everywhere. It says, I love blood. Yes. yes. Might make it hard to strike a really romantic note. Point. Take it. He heads up the stairs. Talks as he changes. I suspect you'll prefer the next one. And he re-enters in a white t-shirt with large arrow pointing down to his flies saying, get it here. Cool, huh? Yes, she might think you don't have true love on your mind. Wouldn't want that. Okay, just one more. He comes down wearing it, lots of hearts, saying, you're the most beautiful woman in the world. 
I would love for you to have read that even slower, Travis, as I'm trying to make magic happen here. You're the most beautiful woman in the world. Well, yes, that, that's perfect. Well done. Well, right then. Uh, thanks. Well, great. Uh, these words are much longer and they're taking me a whole lot longer to write. Whatever, you'll get it. Okay, great. Well, wish me you can't luck. See them anyway. Good luck. You can't see them at first. Should oh what? Even Spike when I put it up? We can't see them, Jen. Fuck! Well that sucks. Great. Hey, just keep reading. And with that, Spike turns and walks upstairs proudly, revealing that on the back of the t shirt, also printed in big letters, is written Fancy A Fuck. Exterior Portobello Road Day. And so, just another hopeless Wednesday as I set off through the market to work, little suspecting that this was the day which would change my life forever. This is work, by the way, my little travel book shop. A small, unpretentious store named the Travel Book Co. Which, well, uh, sells travel books. And to be frank with you, doesn't always sell many of those. William enters interior the bookshop day. It is a small shop, slightly chaotic bookshelves everywhere with little secret uh, bits around the corners with even more books. Martin Williams' sole employees is waiting enthusiastically. He is very keen and uncrushable optimist, perhaps without cause. A few seconds later, William stands gloomingly behind the desk. Classic. Absolutely classic. Profit from major sales push. Minus 347. Oh, shall I go get a cappuccino? Ease the pain. Yes, uh, better get me a half. That's all I can afford. I get you logic. Demi Capu coming up. He salutes and bolts out the door. As he does, a woman walks in. We only just glimpse her. Cut to Williams working. He looks up casually and sees something. His reaction is hard to read after a pause. Uh, can I help you? It is Anna Scott, the biggest movie star in the world. Her, here in his shop, the most divine, substill, beautiful woman on earth. When she speaks, she is very self-assured and self-contained. No, thanks. I'll just look around. Fine. She wanders over to a shelf as he watches her and picks out a quite, sm uh, quite smart coffee table book. That book's really not good. Um... Just in case, you know, browsing turned to buying. You'd, you'd be wasting your money. Really? Yes. Oh, this one, though, was, um, it was very good. He picks out a book on the counter. I think the man who wrote it has actually been to Turkey, which helps. There's also a very amusing incident with a kebab. Thanks. I'll think about it. William suddenly spies something odd on the small TV monitor beside him. If you could just um, give me a second. Her eyes follow him as he moves toward the back of the shop and approaches a man in slightly ill-fitting clothes. Excuse me. Yes? Bad news. What? We've got a security camera in this bit of the shop. So? So I saw you put that book down your trousers. What book? The one down your trousers. I haven't got a book down my trousers. Right, well, then we have something of an impasse. Uh, I tell you what, I'll call the police and, uh, well, what can I say? If I'm wrong about the whole book down the trousers scenario, I really apologize. Okay, what if I did have a book down my trousers? Well, ideally, um, when I went back to the desk, you'd remove the Cadigan guide to Bally from your trousers, uh, either wipe it and put it back or uh, buy it. See you in a sec. He returns to his desk in the monitor. We just glimpse, as does William, the book coming out of the trousers and put back on the shelves. The, th the thief drifts out towards the door. Anna, who has observed all this, is looking at a blue book on the counter. Sorry about that. <clears throat> no, that's fine. I was going to steal one myself, but now I've changed my mind. Signed by the author, I see. 
<laughs> yes, we couldn't stop him. Uh, if you can find an unsigned copy, it's worth an absolute fortune. She smiles. Suddenly the thief is there. Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes? Can I yes? have your autograph? <clears throat> What's your name? Rufus. He signs his scruffy piece of paper. He tries to read it. What, what does it say? Well, that's the signature, and above it it says, Dear Rufus, you belong in jail. <laughs> nice one. Would you like my phone number? Tempting. But no, thank you. Deep leaves. I think I will buy this one. She hands William a, a 20 note, and the book has said, he said was rubbish. He talks as he handles the transaction. Oh, right. Um, oh, on second thought, maybe it wasn't that bad. Actually, it's a sort of masterpiece, really. None of these childish kebab stories you get in many travel books these days. And I'll throw in one of these for free. He drops in one of the signed books. Very useful for lighting fires, wrapping fish, that sort of thing. She looks at him with a slight smile. Thanks. And leaves. She's out of his life forever. William is a little dazed. Seconds later, Martin comes back in. Cappuccino as ordered. Thanks. I don't think you'll believe who was just in here. Who? Someone famous? But William's innate, innate uh, natural English discretion takes over. No, no one. No one. They said about drinking their coffees. Would be exciting if someone famous did come into the shop, though, wouldn't it? Do you know, this is pretty incredible, actually. I, I once saw Ringo Starr. Or at least, I think it was Ringo. It might have been that bloke from Fiddler on the Roof. Toppy. Topo. Oh, that's right, Topol, yes. But Ringo Starr doesn't look anything like Topol. No. Well, I mean, he was quite a long way away. So it could have been neither of them. I suppose so. Right. It's not a classic anecdote, is it? Not classic, no. Martin shakes his head. William drains his cappuccino. Right. Want another one? Yes. No, wait. Let's go crazy. I'll have an orange juice. Next day, Portobello Day. William sets off interior coffee shop day. William collects his juice in a coffee shop. Westbourne Park Road, exterior Portobello de Road Day. William swings out of the little shop. He turns the corner of Portobello Road and bumps straight into Anna. The oh. orange juice in its foam cup flies. It soaks Anna. Jesus. Oh, here, here let me help. He grabs some paper napkins and starts to clean it off, getting far too near her breasts and the panic of what it. What are you doing? He jumps back. Nothing. Nothing. Look, I live just up the street. You could get cleaned up? No, thank you. I need to get my car back. I also have a phone. I'm confident that in five minutes we can have you spick and span and back on the street again. In a non-prostitute sense, obviously. In his different way he is confident despite being genuinely annoyed she turns and looks at him okay so what does just over the street mean give it to me in yards 18 yards uh, that's my house there he doesn't lie it's 18 yards away she looks down she looks up at him interior williams house corridor day they enter she carries a few stylish bags Come on in, I'll just... Um... William runs in further. It's a mess. He kicks some old shoes under the stairs, bins an unfinished pizza, and hides a plate of breakfast in a cupboard. She enters the kitchen. It's not that tidy, I fear. As he And he guides her up the stairs after taking the bag of books from her. The bathroom is uh, right at the top of the stairs, and there's a phone in the desk up there. She heads upstairs. Interior kitchen day. William is tidying, uh, uh, tidying up frantically. Then he hears Anna's feet on the stairs. Oh, I saved that. She walks down wearing a, sh wearing a short, sparkling black top beneath her leather jacket with her trainer still on. He is dazzled by the sight of it. Would you like a cup of tea before you go? No, thanks. Coffee? No. Orange juice? 
Probably not. I wonder if there's any cold in it. Oh yeah, he moves to his very empty fridge and offers it on its only contents. Something else cold, um, coke, water, um, some disgusting sugary drink pretending to have something to do with fruits of the forest? Really? No. Would you like something to nibble? Um, apricots soaked in honey. Quite why, no one knows, because it, it stops them from tasting of apricots, but it does, uh, does make them taste like honey. And, and if you wanted honey, uh, you just buy honey instead of apricots. But nevertheless, uh, there we go. Yours if you want them. No. Do you always say no to everything? Pause. She looks at him deep. No. Um, I better be going. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. And may I also say, heavenly. It has taken a lot to get this out loud. He is not a smooth talking man. Take my one chance to say it. I mean, after you've read that terrible book, you're certainly not going to be coming back to the shop. She smiles. She's cool. Thank you. Yes. Well, pleasure. He guides her towards the door. Nice to meet you. Surreal, but nice. In a slightly awkward moment, he shows her out the door. He closes the door and shakes his head in wonder. Then... Surreal, but nice. What was I thinking? He shakes his head again in horror and wonders back along the corridor in silence. There's a knock on the door. He moves back casually. Coming! He opens the door. It's her. Oh, hi. Uh, forget something? Forgot my bag. Oh, right. He shoots into the kitchen and picks up the for, uh, forgotten shopping bag, then returns and hands it to her. Here we go. Thanks. Well... They stand in that corridor in that small place, second time saying goodbye. A strange feeling of intimacy. She leans forward and she kisses him. Total silence. A real sense of the strangeness of those lips, those fabulous lips on his, uh, they part. I apologize for the surreal but nice comment. Disaster. Don't worry about it. I thought the apricot and honey business was the real low point. Suddenly there is a clicking of a key in the lock. Oh my god, uh, my flatmate. I I'm sorry, there there's no excuse for him. Spike walks in. Hi. 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 Spike walks past unsuspiciously suspiciously and heads into the kitchen. I'm just going to go into the kitchen to get some food, and then I'm going to tell you a story that will make your balls shrink to the size of raisins. And leaves them in the corridor. Probably best not to tell anyone about this. Right. No one. I mean, I'll tell myself sometimes, but uh, don't worry. I won't believe it. Bye. And she leaves with just a touch of William's hand. Spike comes out of the kitchen eating something white out of a styrofoam container with a spoon. There's something wrong with this yogurt. That's no, that's not yogurt, it's mayonnaise. Well, there you go. On, uh, for a video fest tonight, I've got an absolute classic. Enter William's living room, right? The lights are off. William and Spike on the couch, just as light, the light from the TV playing on their faces. Cut to the TV full screen. There is Anna. She is in a stylish Woody Allen type modern romantic comedy, uh, Gramercy Park in black and white. Interior Manhattan Art Gallery Day, Anna's character, Woody, Woody Anna, is walking around the gallery with her famous co-star, Michael. They should be the perfect cu couple, but there is, a t there is tension. Anna is not happy. Smile. No. Smile. I've got nothing to smile about. Okay. In about seven seconds, I'm going to ask you to marry me. And after a couple of seconds, wow, she smiles. Interior William's living room night. Imagine, somewhere in the world, there's a man who's allowed to kiss her. Yes, she is fairly fabulous. Interior bookshop day, the next day, William and Martin quietly coexisting. An annoying customer enters, Mr. Smith. Do you have any books by Dickens? No, we're a 
travel book shop. We only sell travel books. Oh, right. How about the new John Grisham thriller? No, that's a novel too. Oh, right. Have you got a copy of Winnie the Pooh? Pause. Martin, your customer. Can I help you? What's your business in Port Royal, Mr. Smith? William looks up at that moment. The entire window is suddenly taken up by the huge side of a bus, obscuring the light and entirely covered with a portrait of Anna from her new film, Helix. Uh, Helix. Interior William's house, co- uh, Condor slash living room day. William heads upstairs and pauses, Spike coming down, wearing full body scuba diving gear. Hey. Hi. Interior William's kitchen day, the two of them fixing a cup of tea in the kitchen. Just incidentally, why are you wearing that? Um, combination of factors, really. No clean clothes. There never will be, you know, unless you actually clean your clothes. Right. Vicious circle. Hmm. And then there, there and I was rooting around in your things, and I found this, and I thought, cool, kind of spacey. Exterior, Williams Terrace Day, the two of them, the rooftop terrace, passing the day. William is reading the bookseller. The terrace is small, and the plants aren't great. But it overlooks London in a rather wonderful way. Spike, still in scuba gear, goggles on. Googles? Really? There's something wrong with these goggles, though. No, they were, um, the prescription, so I could see all the fishes properly. Groovy. You should do more of this stuff. So, any messages? Yeah, I wrote a couple down. Two. That's it. Do you want me to write down all of your messages? William closes his eyes in exasperation. Um, who were the ones you didn't write down from? Um, let's see. Hmm, no. Gone completely. Oh no, wait. There was one from your mum. She said, don't forget lunch and her legs hurting again. Right, um, no one else? Absolutely not. Shut up, stomach. Spike leans back and relaxes. Though, if we're going for this obsessive writing down all messages thing, some American girl called Anna called a few days ago. William freezes, then looks at Spike. What did she say? Well, it was genuinely bizarre. She said, hi, it's Anna. And then she said, call me at the Ritz, and then gave herself a completely different name. Which was... Absolutely no idea. Remembering one name's bad enough. Interior William, uh, William's living room day. William's on the phone. We hear the formal men at the other end of the phone and then intercut with him. Hello. May I help you, sir? <laughs> Look, this is a very odd um, situation. I- I'm friends of, of Anna Scott's and-, and she rang me at home the day before yesterday and uh, left a message saying she's staying with you. Interior Ritz reception day. I'm sorry, we don't have anyone of that name here, sir. No, that's right, I, I know that. She said she was using another name, but uh, the problem was she left the message with my flatmate, which was a serious mistake. Interior Williams living room. Imagine, if you will, the stupidest person you've ever met. Are you doing that? Spike happens to be in the foreground of the shot. He re- He's reading it in the newspaper. Uh, yes, sir, I have him in my mind. And then double it. And that is the, um, what can I say, uh, git that I'm, I'm living with, and he cannot remember. Try Flintstone. What? I think she said her name was Flintstone. Uh, does Flintstone mean anything to you? I'll put you right through, sir. I'm a dab a do. Flintstone is indeed the magic word. Oh my god. Okay, bear. Oh my god, um... Right, this is how to sound. <clears throat> Hello, hi, hi. Um, hi. We hear her voice. Don't see her. Oh, hi. Um, it's William Thacker. I we uh, I um work in a bookshop. <clears throat> you played it pretty cool here, waiting for three whole days to call. <laughs> yeah, I've never played anything cool in my entire life. Uh, Spike, who I'll stab to death later, never gave me the message. Oh. Okay. 
Perhaps I could drop around for tea or something? Yeah, and unfortunately things are going to be pretty busy, but okay, let's give it a try. Uh, four o'clock could be good. Right, great. Classic, classic. Exterior, rich day. William jumps off a bus and walks towards the Ritz. He carries a small bunch of a uh, bunch of roses. Interior, Ritz hotel day. He approaches the lifts. At the lift, he pushes the button and the doors open. As he is getting in, William is joined by a young man. His name is Tarquin. Um, which which floor? Three. William pushes the button. They wait for the doors to close. Interior, Ritz corridor day. The lift lands. William gets out. So does Tarquin. Rooms 30 to 35 are to the left. 35 to 39 to the right. William's heads right. So does Tarquin. Williams is puzzled. He slows down and he approaches room 38. So does Tarquin. Williams spots. So does Tarquin. William points at the number. Are you sure you were... Yes. Uh, right. He knocks. A bright, well-tailored American girl opens the door. Hello. I'm Karen. Sorry, things are running a bit, a little bit late. Uh, here's the thing. He hands them a very slick, expensively produced press kit with the poster picture of Anna for the film, Helix. Interior of the uh, Trafalgar Suite Ant Room Day. A few seconds later, they enter the main waiting room. There are a number of journalists waiting for their audience. What did you think of Helix? Marvelous. Close Encounters meets Jean de Florette. Oscar winning stuff. They both turn to William for his opinion. I agree. I'm sorry, I didn't get down what magazine you're from. Time out. Great, and you? Uh, horse and Hound. Uh, the name's William uh, Wacker. I th think she might be expecting me. Okay, take a seat. I'll check. They sit down as Karen goes off. You brought her flowers? Williams um, goes for the cover-up. No, um, they're for my grandmother. She, she's in the hospital nearby. I thought I'd, I'd kill two birds with one stone. Yes, dark one. I'm sorry. Which hospital? Pause. He's in trouble. Uh, do you mind me not saying it? It's rather distressing disease, and the name of the hospital rather gives it away. Oh, sure, of course. Mr. Thacker. Saved by the bell into your Travelga Suite Corridor Day. You've got five minutes. He is shown in through big golden doors. Karen stays outside in Tira Trafalgar Suites uh, sitting room day. There's Anna. There Anna is framed in the window. Glorious. Hi. Hello. I brought these, but clearly... Um... There are lots of other flowers in the room. Oh, no, no, no. These are great. A fair amount of tension. These two people hardly know each other, and the first and last time they met, they kissed. Sorry about not bringing back the whole Two names concept was totally too much for my flatmate's uh, pea-sized intellect. No, it's a stupid privacy thing. I wish she's a cartoon character. Uh, last time out, I was Mrs. Bambi. At which moment, Jeremy Karen's boss comes in, a fairly grave, authoritative 50-year-old PR <clears throat> man consulting a list. Uh, everything okay? Yes, thanks. And you're from Horse and Hound magazine? William nods. Is that so? William shrugs his shoulders. Jeremy, Jeremy settles a little desk in the corner and makes notes. A pause. William feels he has to act the part. They sit in chairs opposite each other. So I'll just fire away, shall I? Anna nods. Right. Um, the film's great, and I just wondered whether you thought of having more horses in it. Ah, uh, well... We would have liked to, um, but it was difficult, obviously, being set in space. Obviously, very difficult. Jeremy leaves. William puts his head in his hands. He was panicked. I'm 
sorry. I, I arrive outside and they thrust this thing into my hand. I didn't know what to do. No, no, it's it's my fault. I thought this would all be over by now. I just wanted to sort of apologize for the kissing thing. I, I seriously don't know what got into me. I, I just wanted to make sure you were fine about it. I'm absolutely fine about it. Re-enter Jeremy. I do remember that Miss Scott is also keen to talk about her next project, which is shooting later in the summer. Oh, yes, excellent. Um, any horses in that one? Oh, hounds, of course. Our readers are equally intrigued by both species. It takes place on a submarine. Yes, right. Uh, but if there were horses, would you be riding them yourself, or would you be getting a, a stunt horse person double sort of thing? Jeremy Eggers. I'm just a complete moron. Sorry, this is the sort of thing that happens in dreams, not, not in real life. Good dreams, obviously. It's a, it's a dream to see you. What happens next in the dream? It's a challenge. Well, I, I suppose in, in the dream dream scenario, I just um, change my personality because you can do that in dreams and walk across and kiss the girl. But, well, you know, it'll never happen. Pause. They then move towards each other when Jeremy enters. Time's up, I'm afraid. Sorry we're so short. Did you get what you wanted? Very nearly. Oh, maybe time for one last question. Right. Jeremy goes out. It's their last seconds. Are you busy tonight? Yes. They look at each other. Jeremy enters with another journalist in tow. Anna and William stand and shake hands formally. Well, it was nice to meet you. Surreal, but nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you are Horse and Hound's favorite actress. You and Black Beauty. Tied. Interior Trafalgar Suite Corridor Day. William exits fair, uh, fairly despondent and heads for the door. Tarquin is in the corridor calling on his mobile phone. How is she? Fabulous. Wait a minute. She took your grandmother's flowers? William can't think his way out of this. Yes. That's right. Bitch. He turns to go, but is accosted by Karen. Um, if you'd like to come with me, we can rush you through the others. The others? Interior Ritz interview room. Mr. Thacker's from Horse and Hound. A 40-year-old actor with great presence warmly shakes William's hand. Pleased to meet you. Did you like the film? Uh, yes, enormously. Well, fire away. Right, right. Um, did you enjoy m making the film? I did. Any bit in particular? Well, you tell me which bit you liked most, and I'll tell you if I enjoyed making it. Ah, uh, right, right. Um, I liked the bit in space very much. Did you enjoy making that bit? If he enjoyed making that bit. Interior, it's interview room day. Same room, same seat, minutes later with a monolingual foreign actor and an interpreter. Did you identify with the character you were playing? Te identicaste con el personaje que interpretabas? No. I don't know why I'm Italian. No. Ah, um, why not? Porque no. Uh, es un robot carnivore psychopata. Because he is playing a psych psychopathic flesh eating robot. Classic. And here it's interview room day, and now William is sitting opposite an 11 year old American girl. Uh, is this your first film? It's my 22nd. Of course it is. Um, any favorite among the 22? Working with Leonardo. Da Vinci. DiCaprio. Oh, of course. And, and is he your uh, favorite Italian film director? Interior Ritz Corridor Day. William emerges traumatized into the corridor. It is full of camera crews and there is Karen. Mr. Thacker. Yes? Have you got a moment? Interior and a sweet sitting room day. They knock on her door. Come in. William enters a certain nervousness. They are alone again. <laughs> Thing I was doing tonight, I'm not 
doing it anymore. I told them I had to spend the evening with Britain's premier equestrian journalist. Oh, well, uh, great. Perfect. Oh, no shit any brigady. Uh, it's my sister's birthday. Shit, uh, we're, we're going to be having dinner. Okay, fine. But no, I'm, I'm sure I can get out of it. No, I mean, if it's fine with you, I'll, you know, be your date. You'll be my date at my little sister's birthday party. If that's all right. I'm sure it's all right. Uh, my, my friend Max is cooking and he's acknowledged to be the worst cook in the world, but, you know, you could hide the food in your handbag or something. Okay. Okay. Interior, Max and Bella's kitchen slash living room night. Bella and Max are in the kitchen. Oh, I am Max. She's bringing a girl? Miracles do happen. Does the girl have a name? He wouldn't say. Christ, what is going on in there? The oven seems to be smoking a little. Then the bell rings. Oh, God. It's a bad timing. Max shoots out of the kitchen. Interior, Max and Bella's corridor at night. Max heads for the door impatiently. He opens it and turns back without looking at William and Anna standing there. Come on in. Big food crisis. William and Anna move along the corridor to the kitchen. Interior, Max and Bella's kitchen slash living room night. Bella is there. Hi, I'm sorry. The guinea fowl is proving more complicated than expected. He's cooking guinea fowl. Don't even ask. Hi. Hi. Good lord. You're the spitting image of... Bella? This, this is Anna? Right. Okay, crisis over. He rises from his stove position. Max, uh, this this is Anna. Hello, Anna. Um, Scott, have some wine. Thank you. Doorbell goes. Interior, Max and Bella's corridor night. Max opens the door. It is it is honey. Hi. She does a little pose, having worn a real party dress. Yes, happy birthday. They head back along the corridor. Look, your brother has brought this girl and um, interior, Max and Bella's kitchen slash living room night. They enter the kitchen. They enter the kitchen. Hi, guys. Oh, holy fuck. Hun, uh, this is this is Anna. Anna, this is Honey. Uh, she she's my baby sister. Hiya. Oh God, this is one of those key moments in real life when it's possible you can be really genuinely cool, and I'm going to fail a hundred percent. I absolutely and totally and utterly adore you, and I think you're the most beautiful woman in the world. And more importantly, I most genuinely believe and have believed for some time now that we could be best friends. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I think that sounds, you know, lucky me. Happy birthday. Oh my god, you gave me a present. We're best friends already. He's a really nice guy, and then we can be sisters. I'll think about it. The front doorbell goes. That'll be Bernie. He heads out into the corridor to the front door. Interior, Max and Bella's corridor night. Max opens the door. Hello, Bernie. Oh, sorry I'm so late. Bullock's up at work again, I fear. Millions down the drain. Interior, Max and Bella's kitchen slash living room night. They enter the room. Bernie, this is Anna. Hello, Anna. Delighted to meet you. He doesn't recognize her, turns to Honey. Honey Bunny, happy birthday to you. It's a hat. You don't have to wear it or anything. Interior, Max and Bella's kitchen slash living room night. A minute or two later, they are standing drinking wine before dinner. Bernie with Anna on their own. William helping Max in the kitchen. You haven't slept with her, have you? That is a cheap question, and the answer is, of course, no comment. No comment means yes. No, it doesn't. Do you ever masturbate? Definitely no comment. You see, it means yes. Then on to Bernie's conversation. So tell me, Anna, what do you do? I'm an actress. 
Splendid, splendid. I'm actually in stock market, so not really similar fields. <laughs> Though I have done some amateur stuff, PG, Wodehouse, you know, farce, all that. <laughs> Ooh, careful there, Vicar. <laughs> Always imagined it's a pretty tough job, though, acting. I mean, the wages are a scandal, aren't they? They can be. I see friends from university. Clever chaps. Been in the business longer than you. They're scraping by on seven, eight thousand a year. It's no life. What sort of acting do you do? Films, mainly. Oh, splendid. Well done. How's the pay in movies? I mean, last film you did, where, where did you get paid? $15 million. All right. Right. So that's fairly good. <laughs> On the high side, <laughs> have you tried the nuts? All right. I think we're ready. They all move toward the kitchen. Um, I wonder if you could tell me where the... Um... No! Yes, sorry. Um, it's just right down the corridor on the right. What? Meow? Oh, no, internet. <laughs> it's just down the corridor on the right. I'll show you. Hey, a moment. The silence as they leave, then in a split second, the others all turn to William. Quickly, quickly, talk very quickly. What are you doing here with Anna Scott? Anna Scott? Yes. The movie star? Yep. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. The horror of his remembered conversation slowly unfolds. Honey re-enters. I don't believe it. I walked into the loo with her. I was talking, still talking, and she started unbuttoning her jeans. She had to ask me to leave. In here at Max and Bella's conservatory night, a little later, they are they they are sat at dinner. They are sat at dinner. They sit at dinner. Son of a... Bella next to Anna. What did you think of the guinea fowl? I'm a vegetarian. Oh, God. In here at Max and Bella's conservatory night. Moving on through the evening, they are very relaxed as they eat dinner. A few seconds watching the evening going well. Anna is taking in this. Real friends, relaxed, easy, teasing, and there's a cake. Honey, where, uh, honey wears uh, Bernie's unsuitable hat. Anna watches William laughing at something and then putting his head in his hands with mock shame. Interior Max and Bell uh, Bella's conservatory night, cockpit time. Having you here, Anna firmly establishes what I've long suspected that was really, that was really are the most desperate uh, hut of underachievers. Shame. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. In fact, I think it's something we should take pride in. I'm going to give the last brownie as a prize to the saddest act here. A little pause. Then William turns to Bernie. Bernie. Well, obviously it's me, isn't it? I work in the city in a job I don't understand and everyone keeps getting promoted above me. I haven't had a girlfriend since puberty and well, the long and the short of it is, nobody fancies me. And if these cheeks get any chubbier, they never will. Nonsense, I fancy you. Or I did before you got so fat. You see, and, unless I'm much mistaken, your job still pays you rather a lot of money. Oh, no, that's not me. Sorry. All good, sir. All good. I, I get it. Yeah, you, know. right, you see, and unless I'm much mistaken, your money still pays you rather a lot of money, see? Well, honey here, she earns nothing flogging her guts out at London's steediest record store. Yes. And... I don't have hair. I've got feathers, and I've got funny, goggly eyes, and I'm attracted to cruel men, and no one will ever marry me because my boozies have actually started to shriek. You see, incredibly sad. On the other hand, her best friend is Anna Scott. That's true. I can't deny it. She needs me. What can I say? Oof, <laughs> too true. And most of her limbs work, whereas I'm stuck in this thing day and night in a house full of ramps. 
Uh, and to add insult to serious injury, I've totally given up smoking. My favorite thing, and the truth is, we can't have a baby. Dead silence. Ella. Ella shrugs her shoulders. Bernie is totally grief struck. No, it's it's not true. Say, Lovey, we're lucky in lots of ways, but surely it's worth a brownie. Sam reaches for her hand. Max breaks the somber mood. Well, I don't know. Look at William. Very unsuccessful professionally. Divorced. Used to be handsome. Now kind of squidgy around, squeegee around the areas. And an absolutely certain never to hear from Anna again after she's heard that his nickname at school was Floppy. They all <laughs> laugh <laughs> and smile across at William. So I get the brownie. I think you do. Yes. Oh. Wait a minute. What about me? I, I'm I'm sorry. You think you deserve the brownie? Well, a shot at it. You'll have to prove it. This is a great brownie, and I'm going to fight for it. State your claim. Well, I've been on a diet since I was 19, which basically means I've been hungry for a decade. I've had a sequence of not nice boyfriends, one of whom hit me, and. Every time my heart gets broken, it gets splashed across the newspaper's entertainment. Meanwhile, it costs millions to get me looking like this. Really? Really. And one day, not long from now. While she says this, quiet settles around the table. The thing is, she sort of means it and is opening up to them. My looks will go, and they'll find out I can't act, and I'll become a sad, middle-aged woman who looks a bit like someone who was famous for a while. Silence. They all look at her then. Nah, nah. Nice try, gorgeous, but you don't fool anyone. The mood is instantly <laughs> broken. They all laugh. It's a pathetic effort to hog the brownie. Interior, Max and Bella's kitchen, living room slash corridor night. Anna and William are leaving. It was such a great evening. I'm delighted. And he holds his hand to shake. She kisses him on the cheek. He stumbles back with joy. And may I say, that's a gorgeous tie. Now you're lying. You're right. I told you I was bad at acting. Max loves this. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. And you. I'll wait till you've gone before I tell him that you're a vegetarian. No! Night night, honey. So sorry about the loo thing. I meant to leave, but I just... Look, ring me if you need something to go shopping with. I know lots of nice, cheap places. Not that money necessarily is... Nice to meet you. And it gives her a huge hug. You too. From now on, you are my style guru. Anna and William head out. Bernie tries to save some dignity. Love your work. They move toward the door and wave goodbye. Exterior of Max and Bella's house night. William and Anna step outside. From inside, they hear a massive and hysterical scream of their friends letting out their true feelings. William is a little embarrassed. Sorry, uh, they always do that when I leave the house. The house is a Lansdowne road on the edge of Notting Hill. They walk for a moment, a bit of silence. Floppy, huh? It's the hair. It's, it's to do with the hair. Why is she in a wheelchair? It was an accident about 18 months ago. And the pregnancy thing, is that to do with the accident? You know, I, I'm not sure. I don't think they've tried for kids before, as fate would have it. They walk in silence for a moment then. Would you like to come up my house is just... She smiles and shakes her head. Too complicated. That's fine. Busy tomorrow? I thought you were leaving. I was. Exterior, Notting Hill Garden Night, a little later in the walk. What's in there? They are now walking by a five-foot railing with foliage behind it. Gardens. All these streets around here have these mysterious communal gardens in the middle of them. They're like little villages. Let's go in. Oh, no, that, that, that's the point. They're uh, private villages. Only the people who live around the edges are allowed in. 
you abide by rules like that? Um, Her looks makes it clear that she is waiting with interest on the answer to this. Heck no, other people do, but not me. I just do what I want. He rattles the gate, then starts his climb, but doesn't quite make it and falls back on the pavement. Oops a daisy. <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. <laughs> you said whoopsie daisies. Tiny pause. I don't think so. No one said whoopsie daisies, do they? I mean, unless they're... um. Well, there's no unless. No one has said whoopsie daisies for 50 years, and even then it was only little girls with blonde ringlets. Exactly. So here we go again. He fails it unfortunately <laughs> spontaneously. Oopsie daisies. They look at each other. <laughs> it's a disease I've got. It's a clinical thing. I'm taking pills and having injections. It won't last long. <laughs> Step aside. She starts to climb. Actually, be careful, Anna. It, it's harder than it looks. But she's already almost over. Oh, no, it's not. It's easy. A few seconds later, Anna jumps down into the garden. Come on, Flops. William uh, Clamper is over with the terrible difficulty, dusts himself off and heads towards where she stands. Now, uh, seriously, what in the world is in this garden that could make that old whole ordeal worthwhile? She leans forward and for the first time since the first time she kisses him, this time a proper kiss, a tiny pause. It's a nice garden. Exterior, Magic Garden Night. They walk around the garden. It's a moonlit dream. We see the lights of the house that's around the garden. They come across a signal, uh, a signal, simple wooden bench. Single. For June, who loved this garden. From Joseph, who always sat beside her. We cut and see an inscription carved into the wood. She doesn't read the dates carved below. June uh, Weatherberry, 1917 to 1992. She is slightly chalked by that. I'm a little choked by it. Or choked. <clears throat> Some people do spend their whole lives together. He nods. They are standing on either side of the bench looking at each other. The camera glides away from them up into the night sky, leaving them alone in the garden. Music plays. Interior William's living room evening. William is in a towel, rushes downstairs, having just had a shower. He shoots past Spike. Bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. Have you, have you seen my glasses? Nope, afraid not. Bollocks. You know, this happens every time I go to the cinema. Every average day, my glasses are everywhere. Everywhere I look. Glasses. But the moment I need them, they disappear. One of his life's real cruelties. That's compared to, like, earthquakes in the Far East or testicular cancer? Oh, shit. Is that the time? I have, I have to go. Interior Williams living room slash corridor evening. He sprints downstairs now fully dressed. Thanks for your help on the glasses thing. You're welcome. Did you find them? What of? Interior. Cinema night. Mid-film. We move across the audience and there is in the middle of it we see Anna watching the screen and next to her William watching the film keenly through his scuba diving goggles. Interior restaurant night. A very smart Japanese restaurant. We see Anna and William sitting near the end of their meal. You are on mute. Oh, I can hardly hear you, Travis. Sorry. Uh -huh. So who left who? Um, she left me. Why? She saw through me. Uh oh, that's not good. We've been aware of the conversation at a nearby table. Now we can hear it. Two slightly rowdy men. No, no, no. Give me Anna Scott any day. William and Anna look at each other. I didn't like that last last film of hers. Fast asleep from the moment the lights went down. Again, Anna reacts. Don't really care what the films are like. Any film with her in it? Fine by me. No, not my type at all, really. I prefer that other one. Long, sweet looking. Has an orgasm every time you take her out for a cup of coffee. Anna mouths Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan. William and Anna smile. They're enjoying it. Drug induced, I hear. I believe she's actually in rehab as we speak. Whatever. She's so clearly up for it. 
And then it's Twinkle of Fates. You know, some girls, they're all like, stay away, chum, but Anna, she's absolutely gagging for it. Do you know that in over 50% of languages, the word for actress is the same as the word for prostitute? This is horrible. And Anna is your definitive actress, someone really filthy you can just flip over. Well, that's it. And he gets up and goes around the corner to the men. There are, in fact, four of them. The two meager men, Gavin and Harry, hanging on the other guy's witty words. I'm sorry to disturb you guys, but... Can I help you? Yes, I wish I hadn't overheard your conversation, but I did, and I just think, it, you know... He's not very convincing in any or frightening figure. The person you're talking about is a real person, and I think she probably deserves a little bit more consideration rather than having jerks like you drooling over her. Oh, sod off, mate. What are you, her dad? Anna suddenly appears to, at his side and whips him away without being recognized. I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I love that you tried. That time was I'd have done the same. They walk on and then... In fact, give me a second. As she walks straight back to their table. Hi. Oh my god. I'm so sorry about my friend. He's very sensitive. No, 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 no. Look, I, I'm sorry. Please, please, just, just leave it there. I'm sure you meant no harm, and I'm sure it was just friendly banter, and I'm sure your dicks are all the size of peanuts. Perfect match for the size of your brains. Enjoy your meal. Tuna's really good. He walks away. Gerald turns to Lawrence. You prick! Exterior Ritz Ar Arcade Night. They are walking. I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, you were brilliant. Oh, God. I'm rash and stupid. And, and what, what am I doing with you? I don't know, I'm afraid. I don't know either. They have arrived at the end of the arcade. Here we are. Do you want to come up? There seem to be lots of reasons why I shouldn't. There are lots of reasons. Do you want to come up? His looks say yes. Give me five minutes. He watches her go and stands in the street. Music plays in tear, Ritz corridor slash Anna Sweet Night. William coming along the hotel corridor. He knocks on the door. Hiya. There is something slightly awry he doesn't notice. Hi. He kisses her gently on the cheek. To be able to do that is such a wonderful thing. You've got to go. Why? Because my boyfriend, who I thought was in America, is in fact in the next room. Your boyfriend? He is duly shocked. She's, she's trying to be calm. Yes. Who is it? Jeff drifts into view behind. He's a very <clears throat> famous film star and looks the part. Well built, very handsome, unshaven. He has magic charm. Whatever he says over a t-shirt, he wears a shirt, which he unbuttons as he talks. Uh, room service. How you doing? I thought you guys all wore those, uh, penguin coats. Well, yes. Usually I just, just change to go home, but, uh, but I, I thought I'd, I'd deal with this final call. Oh, great. Could you do me a favor and try to get us some really cold water up here? I'll see what I can do. Still not sparkling. Absolutely, ice cold still warm. Unless it's illegal in the UK to serve liquids below room temperature. I don't want you going to jail just to satisfy my whim. No, I'm sure it'll be fine. And maybe you could just adios the dishes and empty the trash? Right. And he does just that, scoops up the two uh, used plates and heads to the bin. Really don't do that. I'm sure this is not his job. I'm sorry, is this a problem? Uh, no, it's fine. What's your name? Uh, Bernie. He slips him a fever. Fiver. Fiver, that's you. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, hey, nice surprise or nasty surprise? Nice surprise. He kisses her. Liar. She hates surprises. What are you ordering? I haven't decided. Well, don't overdo it. I don't want people saying there goes that famous actor with a big fat girlfriend. He wanders off, taking off his t-shirt. I, I, 
believe. Anna just nods. This is a fairly strange reality to be faced with. To be honest, I don't recognize... I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to say. I, I think goodbye is traditional. Interior Ritz Carl, uh, Corridor Night, William walks away. Exterior Ritz Night, William walks down the arcade outside the hotel. He is stunned. Exterior London Bus Night, William sits alone on a bus. We see him through the side window as it drives away. We see that the whole back of the bus is taken up with a huge picture of Anna. Interior William's Bedroom Night, he gets into his room and sits on the bed. Interior Spaceship Night, spa uh, yeah, Spaceship Night, Space, Anna, and the very high-tech environment and the serious moods fasten the last gasps on her uniform. She takes a helmet type thing and places it on her head. Interior con uh, connect cinema night. Cut round to the cornet cinema where the film is showing it's not full. The camera moves and finds sitting on his own William just watching. We see a momentous flash of light from the screen explode reflecting his eyes in Terry Williams' living room leaving. Williams is looking out the window lost in thought. Spike enters. Come on, open up. This is me, Spiky. I'm in contact with some quite important spiritual vibrations. What's wrong? Spike settles on the arm of a chair. William decides to open up a bit. Well, okay. Um, there's this girl. Aha! I had been getting a female vibe. Good. Speak on, dear friend. She's someone I can't. I just can't. Um, someone who. Mm. Self evidently can't be mine, and it's as if I've taken love heroin and now I can't even have it again. I've opened Pandora's box and there's trouble inside. Yeah, like that, yeah, tricky, tricky. I knew a girl at school called Pandora, never got to see her box though. <laughs> With laughter, William smiles. Thanks. Yes, uh, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Interior Tony's restaurant night. Only two tables are being used. William and his friends are on their first course. Bernie reads an evening standard with a picture of Anna and Jeff at Heathrow Airport. You didn't know she had a boyfriend? No. But did you? Their looks make it obvious that everyone did. Hell, I can't believe it. My whole life ruined because I don't read Hello Magazine. Let's face facts. There was always a no-go situation. Anna's a goddess, and you know what happens to mortals who get involved with the gods. Bugged. Every time, but don't despair. I think I have the solution to your problems. Really? They all look at him for wise words. Her name is Tessa, and she works in the contracts department. The hair, I admit, is unfashionable, freezy, freezy but she's as bright as a button and kisses like a Nymphomaniac on death row, apparently. Where is that woman? Interior, Max and Bella's kitchen, living room night. The kitchen, William is looking uneasy. A doorbell rings. Now try. William nods. Max heads off to the door. We see, uh, we stay with William and just hear the door open and a voice comes down the corridor. Oh, I got completely lost. It's real difficult, isn't it? Everything's got the word Kensington in it. Kensington Park Road, Kensington Gardens, Kensington Bloody Park Gardens. They reach the kitchen. Tessa is a lush girl with huge hair. Tessa, this is Bella, my friend. Oh, my wife. Oh, you're in a wheelchair. That's right. And this is William. Hello, William. Max has told me everything about you. That's he. Oh, Fine. yes, please. Come on, wine. let's get sloshed. She turns to take the wine, and William has a split second to send a message to panic Bella. She agrees it's bad. Into your Max and Bella's kitchen conservatory night, Max walks over to the table. Honey, Bella, William, and other girl. Uh, Keza, some woodcock? No, oh, thank you. I'm a fruititarian. I don't realize that. It is left to William, who has been set up here to fill the pause. And, um, what's a fruitarian exactly? 
we believe that fruits and vegetables have feelings, so we think cooking is cruel. We only eat things that have actually fallen from the tree or bush that are, in fact, dead already. Right, right. Uh, interesting stuff. So these carrots? Had been murdered, yes. Murdered? Poor, poor carrots, how beastly. And here at Maxwell's Conservative Night, time for coffee and chocolates. Beside William sits the final perfect girl. She is rosy, quite young, smartly dressed, open-hearted. It is just Max and William and Bella and her. Delicious coffee. Thank you. I'm sorry about the lamp. No, I thought it was really, you know, interesting. Really inedible. Yes, that's right. They all laugh. It's going very well. And here at Max and Bella's corridor at night, William is with Rosie by the door, just about to say goodbye. Maybe we'll meet again sometime. Yes, uh, that would be great. She kisses him gently on the cheek. He opens the door. She walks out. He shuts the door quietly and heads back into the living room. And here at Max and Bella's living room night, Max and Bella wait excitedly. Well? He's perfect. Perfect. And? William makes a gentle, exasperated gesture then. I think you have forgotten one unusual situation you have. Find someone you actually love, uh, who will love you. Chances are always <laughs> minuscule. But look at me, not counting the American. I've only loved two girls in my whole life. Both total disasters. That's not fair. No, really. One of them marries me and then leaves me quicker than you can say Indiana Jones. And the other, who seriously ought to have known better, casually marries my best friend. Still love you, though. In a depressingly asexual way. I never really fancied you much, actually. They all roar with laughter. <laughs> I mean, I loved you. You were terribly funny, but... All that kissing my ears. Oh, no, this is just getting worse. Look, I'm going to find myself 30 years from now still on this couch. Do you want to stay? Why not? I'm going to wait to get home as a masturbating Welshman. Music starts to play to take us through these silent scenes. And here, Max and Bella's living room night. Max lifts Bella off her couch and carries upstairs. Carries her upstairs. Uh, mixed through, William sits on the couch downstairs, eyes wide open, thinking. And here, Max and Bella's kitchen living room day. Morning, Max, all in his suit for the city. Bella kisses him goodbye. William sees this for the kitchen. She is also dressed for work and moves back into the kitchen to pack her briefcase with law books from the kitchen table. Exterior, Max and Bella's uh, house day. William emerges from the house, a little ruffled from a night away from the home. Uh, he heads off. Exterior, news agent day. William walks past his news, uh, news agent heading for home. We see through he doesn't. He doesn't. A rack of tabloid papers, all of which seem to have very grainy grabbed pictures of Anna on their front page. Headlines, Anna Stunna. It's definitely her. And Scott of uh, Pantri uh, Patricia? Yeah. Interior, William's bathroom day. William is shaving. The bell goes. He heads to answer it. Exterior slash interior, William's house day. William arrives at the door and opens it. There stands a dark glass. Anna. Hey. Can I come in? Yeah, co co come in. She moves inside. Her hair is a mess. Her eyes are tired. Nothing idealized into your living room day, the two of them. We were taken years ago. I know, I know it was... It was poor, and it, it happens a lot. It's just not an excuse, but to make things work, it now appears that someone was filming me as well. So it was a stupid photo. So what was a stupid photo shoot? Now it looks like a porno film and well, pictures have been sold and they're everywhere. William shakes his head. I, I, I don't know where to go. The, the hotel is surrounded. This is the place. Thank you. I, I'm just in London for two days, but with your papers, it's the worst place to be. She's very shaken. Very shaken. These are, these are such horrible pictures. There's, 
so grainy. They make me look like. Don't think about it. We'll sort it out. Now, what would you like? A tea? A bath? A bath would be great. Interior, Williams Corridor Day. Spike enters through the front door. William doesn't hear him. She is reading newspapers with Anna, Anna's pictures in it. Christ alive! Brilliant! Fantastic! Magnificent! He heads upstairs, opens the door, walks in. Interior, Williams Bathroom Day. Spike heads for the toilet, undoes his zip. It must be Spike. She's in the path. Spike turns in shock and slides out of the bathroom. Interior, Williams Corridor Day. Spike calms himself down. He then opens the bathroom door again and looks in and here William's bathroom day and is still lying in the bath. Hi. Just checking. Interior corridor day. Spike comes back out into the corridor and looks to heaven. Thank you, God. Interior William's kitchen day. William and Anna at the kitchen table eating toast, drinking tea. I'm really sorry about the last time. He just flew in. I had no idea. And in fact, I had no idea if he'd ever fly in again. No, that's fine. It's not often one has the opportunity to adios the plate of a major Hollywood star. It was a thrill for me. But how is he? I don't know. Uh, I got to a point where I couldn't remember any of the reasons I loved him. And you... And love... Well, there's a question without an interesting answer. I have thought about you. Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't think she has to talk about this. Just any time I've tried to keep things normal with anyone normal, it's, it's been a disaster. I appreciate that, absolutely. Is that the film you're doing? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I start in LA on Tuesday. Would you like me to? take you through your lines? Would you? It, it, it's all talk, 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 talk. Oh, hand it over. Basic plot. Uh, it's a difficult but real, or I'm sorry, I am a difficult but brilliant junior officer who in about 20 minutes will save the world from a nuclear disaster. Well done you. Exterior Terrace Day, a little later they're in the thick of the script. Message from command. Would you like them to send the HKs? No. Turn over the TRs and tell them we need radar feedback before the KFTs return at 1900 and then inform the Pentagon that we'll be needing black star cover from 1000 through 10, 1215. And don't you dare say one word about how many mistakes I made in that speech or I will pelt you with olives. Very well, Captain. I'll, I'll pass that on straight away. Thank you. How many mistakes did I make? 11. Damn. And, <clears throat> and Wainwright, Cartwright. Cartwright, Wainwright, whatever your name is. I, I promised little Jimmy I'd be home for his birthday. Could you get a message through that I may be a little late? Certainly. And little Johnny. My son's name is Johnny? Yep. Get, well, get a message through to him, too. Brilliant. Word perfect, I'd say. What do you think? Gripping. I mean, it's not... Jane Austen, it's not Henry James, but but it's gripping. I think I should do a Henry James instead. I'm sure you'd be great with Henry James. But, uh, you know, this right is pretty damn good too. Yes, I mean, you never get anyone in wings of a dove having the nerve to say, inform the Pentagon that we need Black Star cover. <laughs> I think the book is the porter for it. Sorry, Anna smiles. Her biggest smile of the day. He is helping interior Williams' dining room. Anna and Williams sat down at the table. There's a picture hanging on the wall behind. I can't believe you have that picture on your wall. It is poster of Chingal painting of a floating wedding couple with a goat as a company. You like Chagall? I do. It feels like how being in love should be. Floating through a dark blue sky. Or the goat playing a violin. Yes, happiness wouldn't be happiness without a violin playing goat. Spike enters with three pizzas. I am here. Ah, voila! 
Carnival Calypso for the Queen of Notting Hill, pepperoni, pineapple, and a little more pepperoni. Fantastic. I don't mention that. I didn't mention that Anna's a vegetarian, did I? No. I have some parsnip stew from last week. If I just peel the skin off, it'll be perfect. Interior Williams living room night. Later in the evening, William and Anna on their own. They're sipping coffee a few seconds of just coexisting. Anna looks up. Got big feet. Yes, always have had. And you know what they say about a man with big feet? No, what's that? Big feet. Large shoes. He laughs. Interior Williams living room night a few hours later, eating ice cream out of the tube. Tub. God damn it, Travis. The thing that's so irritating is that I'm so totally fierce when it comes to nudity clauses. You actually have clauses in your contract about nudity. Definitely. You may show the dent of the top of the artist's buttocks, but neither cheek. In the event of a stunt person being used, the artist must have full consultation. Well, I'm sorry, you have a stunt bottom? I could have a stunt bottom, yes. Would you be tempted to go for a slightly better bottom than your own? Definitely. This is important stuff. Well, it's one hell of a job. What do you put on your passport? Profession. Mel Gibson's bottom. Actually, Mel does his own ass work. Why wouldn't he? It's delicious. But the ice cream or Mel Gibson's bottom? Both. Interior Williams upstairs corridor night. They are walking upstairs and stop at the top. Today has been a good day, which under the circumstances is unexpected. Well, well thank you. Anyway, uh, time for bed or uh, sofa bed. Right. Pause. She leans forward, kisses him gently, then snaps into the um, steps into the bedroom and closes the door. And Terry, Terry Williams, living room night. Williams downstairs on a sofa under a duvet, eyes open, thinking. Pause and pause. He waits and waits. The ultimates yearn, but nothing's happening. Happens. William gets off the sofa decisively, sits on the side of it, then gets back in again. Pause, pause. Then, in the darkness, a stair creaks. There's someone there. Oh, my God. Hello? Hello. I wonder if I could have a little word. He just around the corner, half naked. Like. I don't want to interfere or anything, but she's split up from her boyfriend. That's right, isn't it? Maybe. And she's in your house. Yes. And you get on very well. Yes. Well, isn't this perhaps a good opportunity to slip her one? Right, for God's sake, she's in trouble. Pretty great. Right, right. You think it's the wrong moment. Fair enough. Do you mind if I have a go? Mike! Ah, no. No, you're right. Talk to you in the morning. Okay, okay. Might be too late, but okay. Back to Williams, thinking again, dreamy atmosphere, and then more footsteps on the st stairs. Oh, please, sod off. Okay. What? No, no, wait, wait, I thought, I thought you were someone else. I, I thought you were Spike. I'm delighted that you're not. The darkness of the living room, we see Anna in the shadow interior, Williams living room night. A few moments later, William and Anna stand in the middle of the room. He kisses her neck, then her shoulders. What a miracle, just to be able to touch the girl's skin. Then he looks at her, the fa that face he is suddenly struck by who it is. Wow. What? And then gets over it straight away. Nothing. And kisses her. Interior Williams, bedroom night. In the middle of the night, they are both asleep, a yard apart in sleep. Her in her arms reaches out, touches it his shoulders, and then she ring, uh, wiggles right across and resettles herself tenderly right next to him. He is not asleep and knows how extraordinary this all is in Terry Williams' bedroom night the morning. It still strikes me as, well, surreal that I'm allowed to see you naked. You and every person in this country. Oh, God, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. What is it about men and nudity? Particularly breasts. How can you be so interested in them? Well. No, seriously, I mean, they're just breasts. Every second person in the world has got them. 
more than that, actually, when you think about it. You know, meatloaf has a very nice pair. Uh, they're odd looking. They're, oh, are you okay? Shit. Sorry, I tossed my cat into something. Um, they're odd looking. They're just for milk. Your mom's got them. You must have seen a thousand of them. What's the fuss about? Actually, I can't think, really. Let me just have a quick look. He looks under the sheet at her breasts. <laughs> that beats me. <laughs> Rita Hayworth used to say, they go to bed with Gilda and they wake up with me. Did you feel that? Who was Gilda? Her most famous part. Men went to bed with the dream and then they didn't like it when they woke up with the reality. Do you feel that way with me? You're lovelier this morning than you've ever been. No. She looks at him carefully, then leaps out of bed. I'll be back. Interior William's bedroom morning. William on William on bed. The door opens. It is Anna with a tray of toast and tea. Breakfast in bed or lunch? Brunch? She heads across. She smiles and sits on the bed. Can I stay a bit longer? Stay forever. Oh, damn, I forgot the jam. The doorbell goes. You get the door, I'll get the jam. Interior, exterior, William's door. Uh, William heads down the corridor and opens the door outside. Are hundreds of paparazzi and explosion of cameras and the questions of noise and light. The press seem to fill in the entire street. Jesus Christ. He comes back inside, snapping the door behind him. Anna is in the kitchen. What? Don't ask. She heads back in the uh, corridor with no suspicion. <laughs> You're up to something. She thinks he's fooling around. She opens the door. The same explosion in a split second. She's inside. Oh, my God. And they got a photo of you dressed like that. Undressed like this, yes. Jesus. Interior, William's kitchen day. Anna is on the phone. Spike is uh, blindly, blindly heading downstairs to the kitchen in just his underpants. Morning, daring ones. He does, he does a thumbs up to Williams, very excited about he knows was a result. Uh, it's Anna, the presser here. No, there are hundreds of them. My brilliant plan was not so brilliant after all. Yeah, I know, I know. Just, just give me out then. Damn it. He heads upstairs. I wouldn't go outside. Why not? Just take my word for it. The moment William goes upstairs, Spike heads to the front door, exterior William's house day. From outside, we see this scrawny bloke in the frame of the doorway in his gray underpants, a thousand photos. Spike uh, poses uh, authentically. Athletically! Athletically, athletically, my bad. Jesus. Interior Williams Corridor Day, Spike closes the door and wanders along to a mirror in the hallway, muttering. How do I look? Mm, not bad. Not bad at all. Well chosen briefs, I'd say. Chicks love gray. Mmm. And nice firm buttocks. Interior Williams Bedroom Day, William enters. He's unhappy for her. She's almost dressed. How are you doing? How do you think I'm doing? I, I don't know what happened. I do. Your furry friend thought he'd make a buck or two selling the papers where I was. She's packing. But that's not true. Really? The entire British press just woke up this morning and thought, hey, I know where Anna Scott is. She's in that house with a blue door in Notting Hill. And then you go out in your goddamn underwear. Uh, I went out in my goddamn underwear, too. Get out, Spike. Okay. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. This is such a mess. I come to you to protect myself against more crappy gossip, and I'm landed in it all over again. For God's sakes, I've got a boyfriend. You do? It's a difficult moment, defining where they stand. As far as they're concerned, I do. And now tomorrow, there'll be pictures of you in every newspaper from here to Timbuktu. I know, I know. Just let's stay calm. You can stay calm. It's the perfect situation from you. Minimum input, 
it's not publicity. Everyone you will ever bump into will know. Now, well done, you. You slept with that actress. We've seen the pictures. That's spectacularly unfair. Who knows? Maybe you'll even help business by a boring book about Egypt from the guy who screwed Anna Scott. She heads out into your stairs living room day. Now, stop. Stop. I, I beg you, calm down. Have a, have a cup of tea. I don't want a goddamn cup of tea. I want to go home. The doorbell goes. Spike, check who that is. And for God's sake, put some clothes on. Spike leans merrily out of the window. Looks like a chauffeur to me. In Terry Williams' kitchen corridor day, they move from the kitchen into the corridor. And remember, Spike owes you an expensive dinner. Or holiday, depending if he's got the brains to get the going rate on betrayal. That's not true. And wait a minute, this is, this is crazy behavior. Look, can't we just laugh about this? I mean, seriously, in the huge sweep of things, this stuff doesn't matter. What he's going to say next is there are people starving in the Sudan. Well, there are. Uh, and, and we don't need to go anywhere uh, near that far. But my best friend slipped. She slipped downstairs, cracked her back, and she's in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. All I'm asking is for a normal amount of perspective. You're right. Of course you're right. It's just that I've dealt with this garbage for 10 years now. You've had it for 10 minutes. Our perspectives are a little different. I mean, today's newspapers will be lining tomorrow's waste paper bins. Excuse me? Well, you know, it, it's just one day. Today's papers will have been thrown away tomorrow. You really don't get it. This story gets filed. Every time anyone writes anything about me, they'll dig, it up, they'll dig up these photos. Newspapers last forever. I'll regret this forever. He takes that in. He takes this in. That's the end. Right. Fine. Um, I will do the opposite. I, if it's all right by you. And always be glad you came. But you're right. Probably better go. She looks at him. The doorbell goes again. She opens the door. Massive noise. And photos outside are her people, including Karen, a chauffeur, two bodyguards. And then the door is shut. And they are all gone. Silence. Interior Williams kitchen corridor day. Spike and Williams sitting there. Pause. I suppose I might have told one or two people down at the pub. Right. He puts his head in his hands. It's over now. Exterior London day. As full sad music plays, William begins to walk through Notting Hill. This walk takes six months as he walks the seasons actually and magically change from summer through autumn and winter back into spring. First, it is summer. Summer fruits and flowers and six months and six months pregnant women hunting with another leather jacket boyfriend. As he walks on the ra- as he walks on the rain uh, starts to fall, he turns up his coat collar umbrellas appear, followed by winter coats, chestnuts roasting. Christmas trees on sale and the first hint of snow. Then he comes to a, a bohemian crescent, which is startling snow, uh, snowscape from the hundred yard right across the Ladbroke Grove. By the time he reaches the Purple Calf, the snow is melting, and in a few yards it is spring again. He passes Honey again, arguing with her boyfriend, walking away tearful, then turns past the pregnant woman. Now holding her three month baby, the camera. Holds on her interior bookshop day, a gray day in the bookshop. Martin William, as ever, a feeling that things, uh, a feeling that things in there ever change. Uh, ten seconds pass. Honey rushes in. Spike, still feeling in disgrace, comes in with her, uh, comes in with her, but lingers in the doorway. Have we got something for you? Something which will make you love me so much you'll want to hug me every single day for the rest of my life. Blimey, what's that? The phone number of Anna Scott's agent in London and her agent in New York. You can ring her. You think about her all the time. Now you can ring her. Thanks. That's great. It is great, isn't it? See you tonight. Hey, Marty. Sexy Cardi. Man, I love that accent. As she rises up, William looks up the pieces of paper, folds it, and then places it gently into the garbage bin. Into your Tony's restaurant night, Bella. Uh, bangs a spoon, but not the other thing, on a wine bottle. Uh, 
all the friends are gathered in the restaurant. Damn it, Travis. I have a little speech to make. I won't stand up because I can't be bothered. <laughs> exactly a year ago today, this man here started the finest restaurant in London. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, no one ever came to eat here. A uh, tiny hiccup. And so we must face the fact that from next week we have to find somewhere else nearby to eat. Tony's brave face breaks the dream is over. I just want to say to Tony, don't take it personally. The more I think about things, the more I see no rhyme or reason in life. No one knows why some things work out and some things don't. Why some of us get lucky and some of us... Fired. No! Yes. You're shifting the whole outfit much more towards the trading side and of course, that's total crap. They are all rather stunned. So, we go down together and toast to Bernie, the worst stockbroker in the whole world. They toast him. Since it's an evening announcement, I've also got one. <clears throat> I've decided to get engaged. I found myself this nice, slightly odd-looking bloke who I know is going to make me happy for the rest of my life. Special cut to Bernie. The shot shows he had special feelings for Honey. Wait a minute. I'm your brother, and I don't know anything about this. Is it someone we know? Yes. I will keep you informed. As she sits down, Honey leans towards Spike and whispers. By the way, me? Yes. What do you think? Well, yes. Groovy. Any more announcements? Yes. I, I feel I must apologize to everyone for my behavior for the last six months. I have, as you know, been slightly down in the mouth. There's an understatement. There are dead people on better form. But I wish to make it clear I've turned a corner and henceforward intend to be impressively happy. Interior Tony's restaurant night, two hours later, they've had a very good time. There's been a chocolate cake, lots of alcohol. Tony is playing Blue Moon on the piano and Bernie joins him singing. At one table, Bella and Honey sit, beer and wine on the table. I'm really horribly drunk. Elsewhere, Max and William are relaxed together. So, you laid the ghost. I believe I have. Don't give a damn about the famous girl. I don't think I do. Which means you won't be dis distracted by the fact that she's back in London, grasping her Oscar, and to be found filming most days on Hampstead Heath. He puts down a copy of the Evening Standard with a picture of Anna on its cover. Oh god, no. So, not over her, in fact. Exterior Hampstead Heath Day. Cut to the wide uh, sweep of Hampstead Heath. William enters alone. He marches up a hill, goes over the crest of it, and sees a huge film crew and hundreds of extras in front of the radiant white of Kenwood House, with its lawn and its lakes. Exterior Kenwood House Day. Now, closer to the house, William approaches a barrier where he is, he is himself approached. Can I help you? Yes, I was uh, looking for Anna Scott. Does she know you're coming? No, no, uh, she doesn't. I'm afraid I can't really let you through then, sir. Uh, right, I mean, I, I, I'm a friend. Uh, I'm, I'm not a lunatic. Uh, no, uh, you basically... Um... Can't let you in. At that moment, 30 yards away, William sees trailer uh, trailer door open. Out of it comes Anna, looking extraordinary in a velvet dress for beautiful makeup, rich, extravagant hair. She has a necessary cluster of people about her, hair, makeup, costume, and the third assistant who has collected her. She walks a few yards and then casually turns her head and sees him. 
Her face registers not just surprise, certainly not a simple smile. His being there is complicated thing. Cut back to him, he does a small wave. She pauses as the whole uh, paraphernalia of the upcoming pa uh, scene passes between them. The movie divides them, but then she begins to walk through it, and followed by her cluster, she makes her way towards him. When she reaches him, the security guard stands back at pace, and her people hold back. She doesn't really know what to say. Um, this is certainly... Uh... I only found out you were here yesterday. I was going to ring, but I didn't think you'd want to... The third assistant is under pressure. Uh, Anna? She looks around. The poor third is nervous and the first is approaching. It's not going very well. It's our last day. A absolutely. You're, you're clearly very busy. But, wait. Uh, there are things to say. Okay. Drink tea. There's lots of tea. She has swept away four people touching her hair in costume. Come and have a look. Exterior Kenwood Park Day as they make towards the set. Are you a fan of Henry James? Well, this, is, this is a Henry James film. Exterior Kenwood House Day, a complicated shot is about to happen with the waves of extras and a huge moving crane. They end up next to the sound desk. This is Harry. He'll give you a pair of headphones so you can hear the dialogue. Harry, the sound man, is a, is a pleasant 50-year-old balding fellow. He hands him the headphones. Here you go. <clears throat> Volume control is on the side. That, that's great. William, the head, uh, William, the headphones on, surveys the scene. The cluster is at full 100 yards from the action to allow a gracious sweeping wide shot. He watches Anna. She is with her co-star in the Henry James film. Let's call him James. We are living in cloud cuckoo land. We'll never get this done today. We have to. I've got to be in New York on Thursday. Oh, stop showing off. He studies an actress a few yards to the left. God, that's an enormous ass. I'm not listening. No, but seriously, it's not fair. So many tragic young teenagers with anorexia. And that girl has an arse she could perfectly well share around with at least ten other women and still be big bottoms. I said I'm not listening, and I think you looking at something that firm, you would, your droopy little excuse for an arse would be well advised to keep quiet. Uh, back by the desk of William is listening and laughs. That's his girl, Anna prepares. So, I ask you when you're going to tell everyone and you say tomorrow will be soon enough and then i right right who was that rather difficult chap you were talking to on the way up oh no one no one just some guy from the past i don't know what he's doing here but of an awkward situation really thanks dear hampstead he's day Cut back to William. He has heard. Of course. He takes off the headphones and puts them gently down. Thank you. Anytime. William walks away. The moment of hope is gone. He couldn't have had a clear reminder. Interior William's living room evening. William is emptying Anna Scott's videos into a box. What's going on? I'm going to throw out these old videos. No, you can't bend these. They're classics. I'm not allowing it. Right, let's talk about rent. Ooh, let me help. We don't want all these shit, this shit cluttering up our lives. Interior, back room of the bookshop day. The next day, William is hard at work doing the accounts in a dark, small room with files in it. Martin pops his head in. I hate to disturb you when you're cooking the books, but uh, there's the delivery. Martin, can't you just deal with this yourself? It's not for the shop. It's for you. Okay. Tell me, would I have to pay a wet rag as much as I pay you? They head out Martin behind him, incomprehensively rubbing his hands. He is in a very good move. Interior, uh, mood. Interior bookshop day. William enters, and there stands Anna in a simple blue skirt and top. Hi. Hello. You disappeared. Yes, I I'm sorry. I, I had to leave, and I, I didn't want to disturb you. 
Well, how have you been? Fine. Everything much the same. And they changed the law. Spike and I will marry immediately. Whereas you have watched in wonder. Awards, glory. No, no, it's, it's, it's all nonsense, believe me. I had no idea how much nonsense it all was, but nonsense at all it is. Well, yesterday was our last day of filming, so I'm just off. Um, I brought you this from home, and... Uh, and it's quite a big wrapped par uh, parcel, flat, three foot by four foot. I lean against a bookshelf, otherwise known as a four by four, or a three by four. I give it to you, or I thought I'd give it to you. Thank you. Shall I? Um... No, don't open it yet. I'll be embarrassed. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. I don't know what it's for, but uh, thank you anyway. I, uh, actually had in my apartment in New York and just thought you, but when it came to it, I didn't know how to call you. I haven't been behaving so badly twice, but then you came. So I figured the thing is, the thing is. What's the thing? Then the door pings and walks the annoying customer, Mr. Smith. I don't even think about it. Go away immediately. Mr. Smith is taken back and therefore completely obedient. And he oh, leaves. Sorry. Ah, and now he leaves. You were saying? Yes. Uh, the thing is, I have to go away today, but I, I wondered if I didn't, whether you might let me see you in a bit. Or a lot see you if I could like me again pause as William takes this in but yesterday that, that actor asked you who I was and you just dismissed me out of hand I, I, I heard you had a microphone I had, I had headphones you expect me to tell the truth about my life to the most indiscreet man in England? Martin edges up. Excuse me, it's your mother on the phone. Can you tell her I'll ring her back? I actually tried that tack, but she said you said that before and it's been 24 hours and her foot that was purple is now sort of blackish color. Okay, perfect timing as ever. Uh, hold the fort for a second, will you, Martin? Martin is left with Anna. Can I just say, I thought Ghost was a wonderful film. So right. Yes. <laughs> I've always wondered what Patrick Swayze is like in real life. I can't say I know Patrick all that well. Oh, dear. Oh, he wasn't friendly during filming. Well, no, I'm sure he was very friendly to Demi Moore, who acted with him in Ghost. He's kind in here, not sarcastic. Right, right. So, sorry. <laughs> Always been a bit of an ass. William returns a little uneasy. Anyway, it's uh, lovely to meet you. I'm a great fan of yours. <laughs> and Demi's, of course. <laughs> Martin leaves them. Sorry about that. That's fine. There's always a pause when the jury goes out to consider its verdict. She's waiting an answer. Anna, look, I'm a fairly level-headed bloke. I mean, not often in and out of love, but... He, can re he can't really express what he feels. Can I just say no to your kind request and leave it at that? Yes, that's, that's fine. Of course, I, I know, I, you know, of course, I'll just be getting along then. Uh, nice to see you. The, the truth is, 
He feels he must explain. With you, I, I'm in real danger. It, it looks like a perfect situation, apart from that foul temper of yours, but my relatively inexperienced heart would, I fear, not recover if I was once again cast aside, which I, which I would absolutely expect to be. There are too many pictures of you everywhere, too many films. You'd go and I'd be, well, buggered, basically. I see. Reality is a real no, isn't it? I live in Notting Hill. Mm. You live in Beverly Hills. Everyone in the world knows who you are. My mother has trouble remembering my name. Okay, fine. <laughs> Good decision. Pause. The fame thing isn't really real, you know. Don't forget. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Pause. She kisses him on the cheek. Then turns and leaves, leaving him. And here, Tony's restaurant day, the restaurant is on the middle of being uh, deconstructed. The pictures are gone on the walls. A kettle on a long extension lead is on the bar table behind it. They all sitting there. So what do you think? Good move? Good move. When all is said and done, she's nothing special. I saw her taking her pants off, and I definitely gl glimpsed some cellulite down there. Good decision. Mm -hmm. All actresses are mad as snakes. Tony, what do you think? Never met her, never want her. William, Max. Uh, absolutely never trust a vegetarian. Great, excellent. Thanks. Spike enters. I, I was cold and I came. What's up? William has just turned down Anna Scott. You daft prick! Bella is casually looking at the painting that sits beside William in his original of the uh, Ch uh, Chagall, the poster of which was on his wall. Ah, Chagall on the wall. You dumb dumb. Uh, this painting isn't the original, is it? Yes, I think I think that one may be. But she said she wanted to go out with you. Yes, it, sort of. Well, that's nice. Well, well, you know, anybody saying they want to go out with you is pretty great, isn't it? Pretty cheap, actually. Yeah. I mean, I know she's an actress and all that, so I can deliver a line, but so that she might be as famous as can be. But also, that she was just a girl, standing in front of a boy, and love. They take in the line, it totally reverses their attitudes, a pause. Oh, sort of dog, I've made the wrong decision, haven't I? They look at him, Spike does a big nod. Max, how fast is your car? Exterior, Tony's restaurant day. Max's car arrives in the street outside, they pile into the car. If anyone gets in our way, we have small nuclear devices. And we intend to use them. Uh, where's Bella? She's not coming. Saw that. Bernie in the back. He shoots out uh, He shoots out of his door, rushes around, and grabs Bella out of the chair. Come on, babe. Exterior, interior car, uh, Stanley Crescent, Notting Hill, Gate Day, Max Car. And... Max Car is shooting up Stanley Crescent. We are inside and outside the car. Where are you going? Down Kensington Church, Church Street, then uh, uh, Knights Bridge, then Hyde Park Corner. Crazy, go along Bayswater. That's right, then Park Lane. Or you could go down, right down the Cromwell Road and left. No! Suddenly the car slams to a halt. Oh, oh, stop. Stop right there. I will decide the route, all right? All, all right. right. James Bond never has to put up with this sort of shit. Exterior, exterior Piccadilly Day. The car turns illegally right across Piccadilly the wrong way down 
a one-way street and ends out outside the Ritz. William sprints into the hotel. Bernie follows. Bloody hell, this is fun. Interior, uh, yeah, interior Ritz lobby day. Sorry, is Miss Scott staying here? Uh, is... No, sir. Uh, how about Miss Flintstone? No, sir. Or Bambi, oh, I don't know. Beavis or Butthead? No, sir. Right, right, fair enough. Thanks. He turns despondent and takes two steps when the Ritz man stops him in his tracks. There was a Miss Pocahontas in room 126, but she checked out an hour ago. I believe she's holding a press conference at the Savoy before flying to America. <laughs> now I by Gordon Ramsay. Uh, William is very grateful. He kisses the Ritz man. Bernie also grateful. He kisses him too. Him too. Him too. Bernie? Bernie, he kisses him too. Hello? Nala? Mufasa? We have liftoff. A Japanese guest assumes this is the way to behave, and the Ritz man gets kissed a third time. Exterior London Street Day. The car speeds through London. It gets totally stuck at a junction where no one will let them in. Bugger this for a bunch of bananas! He gets out of the car and boldly stops the traffic coming in the opposite direction. Our car shoots past him. Go! They leave him behind. Honey leans out the window and shouts, Yo, my hero! Spike waves wild, uh, wildly. He loses concentration and is very nearly hit by a car. Exterior of the Savoy Day. They pull to a stop. William leaps out. Go! Interior of the Savoy Day. William rushes to the main desk. Uh, excuse me, uh, where's the press conference? Are you an accredited member of the press? Yes. He flashes a card. That's a Blockbuster video membership card, sir. That's right. I work for their in-house magazine. Movies are our business. I'm sorry, sir. Honey shows into the shot, pushing Bella's chair. Pushing Bella's chair. Excuse me. It takes me some time. You know, I am disabled. He's with me. I'm so sorry. Writing an article about how London hotels treat people in wheelchairs. Of course, madam. It's the Lancaster room. I'm afraid you're very late. Run! Interior. Saver room day. William runs, searching, and at last finds the room and enters. Interior Lancaster room day. Huge room, full of press. Row after row of journalists. Cameras at the front, TV cameras at the back. And it clearly gives press conferences very, ra uh, very rarely because this one is uh, positively presidential. She sits at a table at the end of the room. Beside Karen, on her other side, is Jeremy, the PR boss, firmly marshalling the questions. Uh, yes, you, Dominic. Uh, yes. Uh, how much longer are you staying in the UK, then? Um, no time at all. I fly out tonight. In a slightly, um, melancholic and therefore honest mood. Which is why we have to round it up now. Final questions? He points at a journalist. He knows. Is your decision to take a year off anything to do with the rumors about Jeff and his present leading lady? Absolutely not. Do you believe the rumors? It's really not, not my business anymore. Though I will say, from my experience, that rumors are about Jeff do tend to be true. My bad, Anna. They love that answer and all scribble in their notebooks. Next question comes from someone straight next to William. Last time you were here, there were some fairly graphic photographs of you and a young English guy. So, what happened there? He was just a friend. I think we're still friends. Yes, uh, the gentleman in the pink shirt. He's pointing straight at William, who has his hand up. Yes, uh, Miss Scott, are there any circumstances in which you two might be more than just friends? Anna sees um, who is asking. I had hoped there might be, but no. I'm assured there aren't. And what would you say? No, it's just one question per person. No, 
No, but him. Ask what you were saying. Uh, yes, I was just wondering whether, if it turned out this uh, person... His name is Thacker. Thanks. Um, I was wondering if Mr. Thacker realized he'd been a daft prick and got down on his knees and begged you to reconsider, whether you would reconsider. We got to Max, Bella, Bernie, and Honey all watching, then back to Anna. Yes, I'm pretty sure I would. Although that's very good news. The Reeves of Horse and Hound will be absolutely delighted. And it whispers something to Jeremy. Uh, Dominic, if you'd like to ask your question again. Yes. Uh, Anna, how long are you intending to stay here in Britain? Pause. Anna looks up at William. He nods. And definitely. They both smile. Suddenly the press gets what's going on. Music noise. They all turn and flash, flash, flash photos of William, Max, Bella, kiss. Bernie kisses a total stranger. Spike finally makes it. He's bright red from running. How did, oh, what happened? Good. Honey hugs him. It's a new experience for Spike. Cut to William's face. Flash after flash, still looking at Anna. They are both smiling. Interior, interior the Hempel Zen Garden with uh, Marqueen Day. Anna and William at their wedding. They kiss and walk into the crowd. Honey, a bridesmaid in peach satin. She is surrounded by at least four other bridesmaids, all under five. Uh, nearby, Tony standing, glooming besides his fabulous uh, uh, para, uh, paradisical uh, wedding cake. William's mother is not quite happy with how he's looking. She tries to brush his hair. Max dressed in the most devastating bomb-like white tuxedo is dancing with Anna, thrilled. He does a rather flashy move. Cut to Bella, who is watching and laughing. Martin is an awkward tweed suit is jiggling to the beat of a song entirely happy in the corner exterior at the keister square night english a huge premiere screaming crowds anna and william get out of the car she's holding his hand looking ultimately gorgeous he is in a black suit that doesn't quite fit he is startled exterior garden day a pretty green uh, communal garden children are playing watched by mothers one of whom holds a new baby in a uh, papoose a very old couple wander along slowly. A small Tai Chi group moves mysteriously, and as the camera glides, it passes a couple sitting on a single, simple wooden bench overlooking the garden. He is reading. She is just looking out, totally relaxed, holding his hand, preg uh, holding his hand, pregnant. It is William and Anna. The end. The end. Why do?